Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to the Ted Show. Look who is with me today, one of my favorite humans on the planet, Michelle Spurzel with Harbor House of Central Florida. And we're here to talk about the 10th annual Pause for Peace Walk and Wendy's Walk. I love can it. Can you dig it? I love it. It's so good. Uh, so she's going to talk about Pause for Peace and Harbor House and and maybe give us a little bit of stats on what's up in 2021 as far as domestic violence goes. Um, so we have lots to talk about. Welcome, Michelle. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing really well today. So thank you very, very much. And I appreciate always seeing you. I'm hoping that we can do it sometime soon together. Like next. I would love that because I think the last show we did in person, I think, uh, was when I had the shoes. I I for walk a mile. And yes. I, and we in we walked in our shoes on the red carpet. Yes, we did. <laughs> that was we fun. Did. That was um, fun. That all was right. A long so time ago. that feels like it's forever, like a whole nother yeah. lifetime. Because we're different. Yeah. Everything's different. So we'll talk about that too. So tell us about you, just a, just a little bit of background on you. You know, they love that origin story. And then let's talk about Harbor House and Pause for Peace. Perfect. So I am Michelle Sprazel. I'm the girl with the rhyming name. And that is my real name. My, my dad, my mom, they wanted something that was going to be catchy. <laughs> Um, we love been, your mom and dad, then. I, I love my mom. <laughs> I'm I'm super excited. I just got back from seeing them, so everybody Aww. has been vaccinated. So I have I, I love them, but I hadn't seen them for a year and a half. So that's wow. been wonderful to see them. And um, but I've been here in Florida for a long time, here in Orlando for four years, and um, running Harbor House ever since I got here. And I can't believe it. I've been a CEO of a domestic violence center for 15 years. Four wow. of them here. I know when I put when I added that up, I was super surprised. <laughs> you have been here four years. It's been four years. It's been four years. I'm I'm starting my fifth. So yeah. It's amazing. All right. Tell us about tell us about Harbor House. For those those people who don't know what Harbor House is, which some people don't, right? It's not in their right? wheelhouse. They're not, that's nowhere in their parameters. Uh, tell and, them about yeah. So we are the certified domestic violence center that serves here in Orange County area. So we have our crisis hotline. We also have our um, our emergency shelter. We have an on-site daycare for the children who are living in the emergency shelter. We also have, along with that, an on-site kennel, which is why we are raising money for our Pause for Peace walk that goes directly towards the kennel. And then we have... Um, 13 other sites throughout Orange County. And I'm very excited to announce, um, and actually you're the first like true media. Woo! We got a scoop, we got a scoop. We got a scoop, we got a scoop. We are opening up an office in Apopka and we're really doing that in response to COVID. And we hosted our first support group there last night. And so Perfect. we did a little bit of a soft opening and then in May is when we're gonna let more people know about Congratulations. what we're doing. Thank you so much, yes, I mean, um, we are just really listening to where people need help and what kind of services individuals are needing. And that's where we're able to help. And so we well, let's have talk been... about that. 2020, um, talk a little bit about the uptick nationally. I don't know how it was locally in uh, domestic violence, uh, the, not just the reports, but uh, the fear that those were just the ones reported, that there was much more. We were all contained in a small place. There was no, There was none of that. A daily escape that some of the domestic violence victims get when they're that person goes to work or goes off. So it was challenging. So what? Tell us a little bit about 2020 and then what's going on for 2021. So in 2020, absolutely, with the pandemic of COVID-19, there was an increase as far as domestic violence globally. And what we saw is that countries that didn't have or do not have domestic violence laws or um, any type of domestic violence um, support system or practice, they were um, overrun with different people wow. who need help. And so that's what we saw on a global basis. And then nationally, what we saw was basically states where they are underfunded when it comes to domestic violence, they were having the same issues of not being able to reach out to be able to serve survivors who are reaching out for help. And then here locally in Florida, it has been literally a roller coaster of up and down um, where we were seeing statewide that people were reaching out via our hotlines and wanting to come in. And then there was a complete and total silence almost where people wow. weren't wanting to come into domestic violence centers because they were scared to get COVID-19. 
their abusers were using COVID-19 as a way to keep them in the home. And exactly what you talked about, Ted, that the normalcy of um, being able to get out of the house to go to work, to be able to drive the kids to school, to be able to go grocery shopping, all of that went away. And so the domestic violence in the home definitely increased because the proximity of the individuals were closer. There was no, there was no breaks. And so we're seeing a lot of individuals who are living with us now um, really increased mental health issues in addition to domestic violence where the, the domestic violence caused the depression and the PTSD. We're also seeing that we had more people reaching out to us in our outreach centers. And so I like to really, and you and I have been talking about this for the past four years, is that yeah. people know about Harbor House, they know about domestic violence centers for the crisis hotline and the shelter. But we have so much more to offer individuals who need help. And that's why we're expanding and we're opening up an office here in Apopka because we have our legal services, we have support groups, we're starting friends and family support groups and workshops for people awesome. who they know somebody and they don't know where to do and they want to learn more about domestic violence and how they can help. So um, COVID-19 really helped us look at where do we have gaps and how do we fill them and how do we better serve um, Orange County and the community. And so really taking that type of a pandemic and turning it into um, a positive for how, as much as we can. And then for no, me, it, go ahead. No, no, you go. <laughs> no, no, you go. Listen, it's your show. I want you to go. It's your show, but I just wanted to close with this is that um, people talk about you know domestic violence being the pandemic inside the pandemic. And I just, it is the other way around. Domestic violence has been here and it's been a pandemic much longer than COVID-19. And it has just risen to one of the other co-occurring issues that are happening. And um, what I am looking at is how do I let more people know that we exist? How do I let people know that there's a solution? And how do we really work together to end the cycle of violence? I think it's it's so important to point out the 2020 and how how dramatically that impacted people. I remember as a, as a childhood survivor of mm -hmm. domestic violence, I remember um, hating the fact when uh, my abuser would be home from work or we went on vacation or I was it weekends. So you as a survivor, somebody who is dealing with it as a victim, um, you look forward to those times where you get a break. Yes. And I just felt for those people. I knew immediately when I started, I saw maybe the first kind of shutdown and I thought about it as a, as a child and, and just thinking, God, that would have been my nightmare. My nightmare would have been, oh my God, he can't go to work. What am I going to do? How am I going to avoid? Because remember, there's all this avoidance behavior that goes on. You're just trying to mitigate trying to make the abuse less. I mean, all the things that go on in a victim's head, um, it's, it's, really, it's really a mind uh, messes your mind up. And so um, I'm very happy that the services, you, we have the services here, because I guarantee you the need that you're filling, there's probably a whole bunch of people that need it that just haven't been able to get to it. Yeah, and I agree with everything. And that's one reason during the pandemic that we have relied on technology in a new and different way. And so for people who couldn't come into the office um, or couldn't even reach out to us because their abuser is in the same room, we made our normal crisis hotline a text line as well. So people could text us and then we were able to help in that way. Same thing with um, Facebook Messenger, the same thing if we were people were able to reach out to us and we were able to Perfect. help with them that as well. So all those different ways. And then um, having Zoom, one-on-one um, -on -one advocacy calls and talking about safety and talking about safety planning um, and giving referrals to other community pro providers are things that we did as well and we've continued to do. So if someone can't make it to the office, that's okay. We can still be able to talk and be able to provide services. It's just, it's critical, the services you provide. We didn't have that or if we did mm -hmm. back in the ancient times, um, it wasn't quite as, as uh, available as you would think, it was a different world. All right, enough of my history. Let's talk about why pets are important. So one of the things, one of the many things that I love about Harbor House is that um, you can bring a pet. You said you have a kennel. I do. Uh, so talk about that and why that's important. I know, but it's so much better coming from you. Why is it important <laughs> to even worry about pets? What does that even 
matter in the scheme of things when you are trying to escape a an abusive situation? So in a domestic violence situation, oftentimes there the abuser is not just targeting the adult in the relationship. If there is a pet there or if there's a child there, they are also targeting and the abuse is going towards the adult, the child and the pet. And in that scenario, oftentimes the pet is the first victim where someone is going to say the dog ran away when he actually killed the dog or the cat got hit or lost or just straight away when he did something or she did something to the, the cat. And so what we see is that a lot of people don't leave because they don't want to leave their pet behind because they know that the pet's been injured or what there might've been two pets in the house and one of them was killed and the other one is there still. And so the, the stat is actually 80% of people stay in the relationship because they don't want to leave their pets behind. Oh. And I don't have kids, but I have animals and I would never leave them behind because they are my kids. And so that's why we have a kennel on site is so that we are removing that barrier, that fear from that relationship so that someone can come in. And then also we're helping save the lives of the animals because like I said, they're victims too. And so the reason why the kennel is important and pause for peace is so important is that we are raising money to run the program, but also paying for vet, vet bills when someone, when an animal is coming in injured or paying for vet, vet bills to have preventative medicine. And I'm really, what we saw with COVID really opened all of our eyes to the number of people who don't need shelter, but need our services and they have pets too. And so we've expanded the Marvin's fund, which is the medical fund so that we can really help all of our survivors that are here in Orange County with their vet bills and be able to provide food because that was a barrier. And, you know, we didn't think about it. And so now we've expanded our program. So anybody who's receiving Harbor Hot services, if they have a pet and their pet needs something, we're able to help them now. And that's wow. huge, huge, that's huge. Absolutely huge. So that's why we're doing, that's why Harbor House is participating in and we're doing the 10th annual, who can believe it, Pause for Peace Walk. I still love the theme, that 70s walk, and you dig it. I mean, I could say that a thousand times over. Um, I, I feel like I'm on Starsky and Hutch or some kind of crazy <laughs> 70s show. Uh, but uh, talk about the Pause for Peace. What's coming? It's this Saturday. Uh, what does it look like? Because I know all of the in-person registrations, it's already shut down, but you can it's still already do shut it down. <laughs> uh, That's That's yes. an amazing problem to have. Amazing. It's amazing. And it just shows that we are all ready to get out yeah. of our homes, especially out of our homes with our animals. So um, because of COVID, the city of Orlando, they've asked us to limit the number of people on sites to 300 people. And we're already full, but we still have the virtual option available. And then I'm going to show you some of the cool things. We got swag. You got 70. swag. I love it. Swag. <laughs> Swagger. Um, so we have this. <laughs> we have our mask. I love those. Those colors go together so awesome. well. Beautiful. And um, I love it. And we have our little peace sign and our paw print right there. Yeah. And those are for sale to help us raise money for the Pause for Peace Walk. But if, if you register virtually, and if you've already registered and you're um, going to be on site, this is the shirt this year. I love it. It's Isn't so he amazing? Good. This is Groovy Dog. He has a oh name. Oh, my God. It's Isn't so it amazing. Cool. So we, everybody who signs up, they're going to be getting the T-shirt as well. And then... Um, if you have a pet, you're also going to get um, a pet bandana. So it's a little tiny purple bandana oh with our groovy dog on it. And so we're just really, it's a fun event um, to raise money for a really important part of Harbor House. And we're excited even more this year because we couldn't do it last year. And during this, during the pandemic, we saw an incredible increase of the number of people who were coming in, coming in with their pets. And so to give up the, for the numbers, people, it was really that we saw a 121% increase in the number of pets coming wow. in. And so we were definitely full and we want to do some additional things in our kennel so that we can make it. Um, so when someone goes in there that we can have more than one family right now, it's one family, one dog, and then they have the entire kennel to themselves. And we want to be able to grow so that we can have two families in there at the same time because we're having more people come in with their pets. And so raising money, especially this year when we weren't able to do it last year was huge. Um, we have a silent auction to go along with it. And again, it's a virtual auction that we're doing so people can register and just bid on things. 
We have um, hotel stays on there. We also have some jewelry on there. We have some spa gift certificates. Is it too late to donate to that? Oh, no, you can totally donate to that. So okay. um, if you have something, you can always I'll, reach I'll out. I'll email you. We'll send some, we'll, I'll, I'll give you something for that. Oh, amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So absolutely. So we're raising money that way. Um, we're just really um, passionate about animals in addition to everything that we do. And so this to me is just one of my it's most so, fun. It's things. such a cool concept. It's a, it's beautiful weather right now. Uh, you get to be with other pets. Who doesn't love to see other pets? I, I and you can that. dress up for people who like to dress up. Oh like yeah. Tell pet. them about that. Tell them about so, it. Because we're doing the seventies theme and this is something that I, we, I started when I got here is that everybody likes to dress up and then if you can dress up your dog, it's even more fun. So, um, <laughs> we've been, you know, putting it out there a little bit. And last year was heart of a hero. We had, or two years ago now, since we didn't have it last year, which was all about being a superhero. So we had Spider-Man and we had Wonder Woman and we had a free a few um, green hornets and stuff like that. Um, but this year it's the seventies theme. So people could go both directions. You can go the direction of groovy dog and be like at the early seventies where people are still wearing a lot of peace signs and tie dye and walking around or at Ted Mains, who is our um, co-chair. I the love event. Ted Mains. Oh my God. And Donatella, awesome. he's going the other um, he's talking about trying to get some sort of a Donna Summers costume together. So he's going the other perspective. I I'm going to be it. hippie girl and he's going to be Mr. 70s man. So I'm super excited. And one thing we're doing differently this year is we've added a um, best costume for a pet to one of our awards because we really want people to, again, be engaged, have fun and raise money for a cause that's a hard cause to talk about. So I, I agree. I love this. I love everything that you guys do. Um, it's, it's just, a, it's such a blessing for our community to have you, you all at Harbor house. It really is. Thank you. All right. So tell them how they register. If you, if you want to register at, which I'm going to do as a virtual person, um, or you can want to find out more, what, where can they go? So if someone can go to our website and then you can go into, um, events and that's where you're going to see the registration link there. If you follow us on Facebook and you can always register by go to the link on Facebook and register that way. So those are the two main ways that you can find us, but it's pause for peace walk. And even if you Google it, we should probably show up. So it shows up. Um, I've got the, uh, I'll put the link in the comments because there's a link directly to the Facebook invite page too. Uh, but you can go to harborhousefl.com, which is scrolling across the bottom. Uh, you're a joy. Thank you so much for all you do. <laughs> Your team is amazing. It's such an important time. thing as a, as a survivor. I I am just thrilled to be able to come back and be able to support such an awesome organization because I would have loved to have that make a difference in my life. And I know you're making the difference in many, many people's lives. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very much. All right. Michelle Spurzel. Yes, it rhymes. Uh, CEO of Harbor House of Central Florida. Very excited to have you on the show. 10th Annual Pause for Peace Walk. That 70s show. 70s show. I knew I, I love it. That. That 70s walk. Can you dig it? Uh, go to harborhousefl.com. Get out and support our community. The services that they provide are so needed. So get out. You guys are always looking for something to do and you go, well, I don't want to go function there. This is perfect. You can register virtually, do it virtually and still support them. Thank you so much. And a shout out, of course, to the other Michelle for always uh, coordinating and helping us out with this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ted, can I give our number really quickly? Yes, if please anybody do needs give the it. number. So if someone needs our help or if you know someone who needs our help, they can call or text us. And the phone number is 407-886-2856. Okay. And, and we'll put that, that in the so comments hard. too. Perfect. Thank you so, so Thank much. Thank you so much, Michelle Spurzel. You guys go out and support us this weekend. Go to harborhousefl.com. Thank you, Michelle. You're awesome. Bye. Everybody. Thank you so much, Ted. Bye, guys. Oh, I don't know if we're out yet. See, this is what happens live TV.